the channel, Sarah here. Thank you so much for joining me today. So um, if you saw my Insta stories, I have decided that I have graduated from newbie fountain pen person to beginner. Um, so to celebrate that and to try and help out anyone who's maybe setting themselves a new goal to come into the new year, I am putting together five videos in the five days leading up to New Year's um, all about fountain pens and, and being a newbie with them and, and how to get into it and things that I've learned. And each of those five videos, just because I like things matchy-matchy, is going to list five things. So to start off, if we're talking about getting into fountain pens, let's talk about pens. So I am going to tell you my top five starter fountain pens um, these are ones that I've used, my experiences with them, and I'm going to go, so fifth is like the fifth one I'd recommend, number one being the one I'd recommend the most. All right, let's jump into it. I'll have a tup, tup, sip of tea to start. <clears throat> so starting off, and this, just to start with, may actually be a controversial opinion because these pens are very loved, and I do love this pen. But starting off is the Twisby Eco. Now, the reason I have this in fifth place is for a few reasons. The first one is of the five pens, this is the most expensive. So if you are just starting out, you know, this pen uh, retails, I think, at around like 70 Australian dollars. Um, that's a big investment if you're just wanting to, to work out if you like, like something or not. Second to that, uh, it's a, it's a piston filler, so it's not something as simple as just popping a cartridge. You need to understand the mechanisms of the pen or of a fountain pen a little bit more. It is a wetter writer compared to other pens, which is great. But um, I think when you're just starting out, something really wet where you're still working out not to smudge and things like that can be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, and the last reason why is of what people consider starter pens, I found this one the most sensitive. And what I mean by that is, you know, with fountain pens and the nib, you do have to have your hand at the right angle and other pens were more accommodating or more flexible with that compared to this. This really, want, for me, you know, if I wanted to like just kind of be balled up on the couch and write you know, in a way that is not good for the pen, for the paper or my back, this pen would really struggle. Whereas some other pens are like, okay, you do you and I'll follow along. So for those reasons, that is why this is in the fifth spot. So number five is the Twisby. Okay. Eco. Sorry, I didn't finish. <laughs> I just said half the... Half the pen name is the Twisby Eco. All right, next up, and you know what I've done? I didn't put them in order. Yes, I did. Silly me. Next up, and I feel bad that this is in fourth place because it's one of my favorite pens, is the Caveco Sport. This is a pocket pen. It's such a fantastic pen. Um, reason it's in fourth and not higher up the list is some people might not want to have to, you know, when starting out, have to post a pen to write. They might just want to be able to pick it up and go with it. Um, I don't find that to be an issue all, but I do acknowledge that. Um, and the other thing is these pens, it can take cartridges, but also take converters. And some people don't like that. It's a, like a mini piston converter, so it doesn't hold a lot of ink. I actually see that as a positive because for me, just starting out, I wanted to sample lots of different inks. And so that meant like ha having a smaller ink capacity meant I don't feel like I was wasting lots. I could just fill it up. It would last me and, you know, I wasn't having to try and only half fill it or, you know, whatever. I found it quite simple. So this one is not ink, so I'm just going to do this. I think these are fantastic pens. I really, really like them. So many colors, everything like that. It's quite a light pen, so some people don't like that. Um, I don't mind it at all. 
I think it's such a great pen. Awesome. Coming in third place then, just make sure I put my lids back on things. <clears throat> In third place, another German brand, Lamy, and specifically the Lamy Safari because it's at a lower price point compared to something like their All Star. This pen cartridge or cartridge converter, it's just easy. Um, it's, yeah, it's uncomplicated. And for when you're starting out, I think that's what you want. The cartridges are really easy to put in. I have a converter in here at the moment also really easy to put in. I also find with these pens, um, like all the Lamy nibs are interchangeable and actually changing them, um, I found to be quite simple. So as a newbie, if you're wanting to test out different nib sizes, it's you really can't mess up changing that nib. It's like a slide on, slide off. So that was a plus for me. I think it's got a nice little ink window, which is something Actually, that's probably something against this one. It doesn't have an ink window. You can't see how much ink you've got left. Uh, whereas this one, I just realized I was lining them up, but I forgot. We're only after one pen. This one has a, oh God, going everywhere. Has a nice little ink window. It feels really nice in the hand. It's a uh, grip section. I don't know what this is called, but it, it basically helps you with your, where your fingers are supposed to go to write properly. I think it's a good way it works posted or unposted. I actually don't like writing posted with a lot of my pens. I find it back heavy. This one, I don't mind. Uh, all in all, I think this is a, a great option. Now this is inked up with some shimmer. So I'm just gonna do that. So number three. is the Lamy. Safari. Now, coming in a second place, I don't actually have the pen anymore because I just, just sold it. But that doesn't mean I don't like it. it I didn't like the, the color combination that I had um, it's the Pilot Kukuno. I had a white body lavender cap. I'll pop a photo up now. Um, this pen, it's, it's a fantastic pen. It's nothing against the pen at all. I, do, I don't want to give that impression. It's an amazing pen. The nib is incredible. I just didn't like the, yeah, the, the color combination that I had and they've actually released transparent ones like it looks more like a demonstrator and that's something I want to get but I kind of said well then you need to sell the one you have first the nib is incredible it's so smooth it just writes beautifully it feels really nice in the hand um as I said I think I said already in Australia they cost around 20 25 bucks which is super affordable comes with a cartridge um, can get converters. I also just like clean the cartridge out and found the, the pilot one really easy to do. I actually find that pen in general, really easy to clean. Um, so that is why that gets the coveted second spot. So I'm just going to write in here with another pilot. That's that little oh, I didn't dip in enough ink there. So just pretend that I'm laying a pilot cocoon down there. Now, the number one spot. This pen is going to be the cheapest on this list. Some consider them to be disposable. 
I think you can reuse it, though I am finding it is quite hard to clean. So maybe it's either one that it's, it is disposable or you decide that, you know, you just re-ink it with your favourite colour. I think it is a fabulous writing experience. It's this one. It's the Platinum Preppy. This pen in Australia, $8. Eight bucks. That's nothing. You know, with inflation, how it's been, that's a head of lettuce, um, which is depressing. The nib on this pen, I just think is incredible. It's so smooth. It lays down a really nice amount of ink. I've had no flow issues, just straight out of the box. It was just beautiful. Everything about this writing experience has been beautiful. I bought a black one, went through that black cartridge, re-inked it with Noodler's Black Swan in Australian Sunset, was able to clean that. It did stain a little bit. And then I just had a Pen BBS Strawberry Milkshake in there, similar but a little bit different. And I am really struggling. That's the one negative of this is that you can't remove the grey um, bit, the feed, to clean it properly and I've like soaked this overnight and I'm still not moving it anywhere but it cost eight dollars so I can go and get another one and what I will what I will do and I can maybe do that with this one because I actually want to buy a bottle of the Noodler's Black Swan is an ink that I know I'm going to go to time and time again I would I would ink up in this so it doesn't matter if it doesn't clean properly all the way this pen I just think you you can't go wrong with. It is just a fabulous, fabulous pen. They come in a bunch of different colors as well, so you can get you can get the pen with all different ink cartridges in there. Oh, that cartridge is loose in there. Um, they're available on basically every like pen site that I've seen. They're just I have I just have nothing. Nothing wrong to say about it, even when I can't clean it properly. I just think it's an incredible pen. So my recommendation for the go-to starter pen, if you're wanting to get into this hobby, is the Platinum Preppy. It's just such an enjoyable writing experience and it actually wasn't the first pen I got but it was the first pen that I tried an ink that I wasn't sure I was going to like in and it made me fall in love with that ink and it made me fall in love with fountain pens and using them to help extend my creativity and get out of my comfort zone even more. I just think you can't go wrong. So that is it for my first 555 video. These are my recommendations for the top five starter pens if you're wanting to get into the hobby. Pretend there's a Kakuno there. In fifth spot, the Twisby Eco, followed by the Caveco Sport, Lamy Safari, Safari, Pilot Kakuno. But my ultimate recommendation is the Platinum Preppy. Hope that was helpful to someone out there wanting to start with fountain pens in the new year. Please do. It's such an amazing hobby. I'm so deep down the rabbit hole. It's such an incredible community as well. Um, and if you are wanting to, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to chat through what I've learned, my wins, my fails, and I would love to connect with you. Hope everyone has a lovely new year and I will see you in the next video. Bye.